a humongous unicorn that fought the greatest predators of its time, including humans. A powerful weapon so extraordinary, we're still trying to figure out how it worked. Were these giants killers or chillers? Animal logic is going prehistoric. This is the Elasmotherium on Paleologic. Hi, I'm Danielle Dufault, and as you might know, I love paleontology. And I work at one of the top dino research facilities in the world. I know a lot of you have been requesting to see some extinct animals. And to help us with that, we've brought my colleague Talia to help teach us about some of the coolest animals that ever lived. Thanks, Danielle, for that awesome introduction. I'm Talia Lowy Mary, a paleontologist, PhD student, and science communicator, and I'm so excited to go on this journey through time with all of you. This is Paleologic, where we take a deep look at the past and the animals that lived in it. For our first episode, we're talking about one of the most fascinating and controversial creatures of the Pleistocene, the Elasmotherium. Elasmotherium were a genus of giant rhino relatives that lived from about 2.6 million to just about 40,000 years ago. That means they were alive at the same time as humans. Some of your ancestors may have eaten it, while others were possibly mauled by it. Or if you lived in a galaxy far, far away, you might have known it as the Mudhorn. This is the way. They have become a bit of a celebrity extinct mammal due to their allegedly gigantic horn, which some researchers have estimated at up to three meters long. For comparison, the largest horn among living rhinos belongs to the white rhino, which is about 60 centimeters long on average, though some can get over a meter long. You wouldn't want to be on the business end of that hardened spike. But as with anything in paleontology, there's usually more to the story than meets the eye. In a recent paper, researchers hypothesized that the horn may actually have been a much smaller bump, which is controversial because it shakes up most of what we think we know about this animal. We also have this cave painting, which is thought to be a person's interpretive drawing of an elasmotherium. The horn is large, but not as huge as some people have estimated it to be. The outer layer of the horn was likely made of keratin, the same material that makes up your hair and fingernails, with a core that was strengthened by calcium and melanin deposits to prevent breakages. Keratin doesn't usually fossilize, so all we have are educated guesses based on a dome on their forehead that seems to be the base of the horn-generating tissue, and a spine that seems to have supported a large muscular hump. This musculature is only really necessary if you're wielding a heavy object, so a big horn makes sense. But it wasn't just a fancy adornment. These giants lived alongside saber-toothed cats, cave bears, lions, and hyenas. You had to be able to fight your way out of an encounter with such huge predators. Even if a full-grown elasmotherium was likely safe, there was a constant need to protect the young. So despite all the illustrations you've seen, we aren't 100% sure how big the horn was. Even with a smaller horn, these mammals would have been deadly. They likely weighed up to five tons, which is just slightly smaller than the largest living land mammal, the African bush elephant. Their legs were longer than those in modern hippos and were much more horse-like, meaning they could probably gallop like a pony. But given their weight, they probably couldn't run as fast as Seabiscuit. They were built more like a Clydesdale than a thoroughbred. Now, this horse and ancient rhino comparison might seem obtuse, but these two animals are actually quite closely related. They're both members of the Perissodactyla order, meaning they're both odd-toed ungulates, or they walked on only one or three toes on each foot. Like their equine cousins, Elasmotherium were grazers, meaning that they fed on grass, 
though their teeth were better adapted to coarser and thicker grasses than modern horses' teeth. Some have hypothesized that they would also dig into the ground to feed on plant bulbs, tubers, and roots. Elasmotherium had hypsodont teeth, which are a kind of dentition with tall crowns and enamel that is folded into sheets, protecting the teeth from wearing away and resulting in more efficient chewing. This feature, and not their horn, is what gives these animals their name. Elasmos is ancient Greek for laminated, and therion means beast. Similar to rodents whose incisors grow continuously, Elasmotherium's molars never stopped growing to prevent them from wearing away and causing them to starve to death. Elasmotherium originated in China, likely descending from the Sinotherium and slowly moved westward to the Balkans. Their cousins, the modern-day rhinos, bear their horns on their nose, while Sinotherium had theirs halfway between their nose and forehead, and Elasmotherium had their horn right above their eyes, giving them their nickname, the Siberian Unicorn. Less mythical than a unicorn, but just as magical. But while rhinos and Elasmotherium resemble each other, they're not as closely related as they seem. Their most recent common ancestor lived about 45 million years ago, give or take, giving the two groups plenty of time to evolve into very different animals. You are more closely related to the Ikea monkey than they are to each other. We're still not even sure if their skin was thick and rugged like a modern rhino, or if they were woolly like a mammoth. Regardless of what they looked like, this was an extremely successful animal. Elasmotherium were found all the way from Eastern Europe to East Asia when they were at their most widespread. The last living species was Elasmotherium sibericum, which was found throughout Eurasia. Its name was in reference to the Russian princess Ekaterina Dashkova, who donated the first known fossils of this species to Moscow University in the early 1800s. This species far outlived all other Elasmotherium species, but eventually fell victim to a changing climate. The lush grasslands on which they lived began to freeze at the beginning of the last ice age, and by about 40,000 years ago, they were mostly tundra. And little by little, the real life unicorn disappeared. Flash forward to today, and the largest living land mammal in Eurasia is the mighty European bison, which only weighs about a tenth of what an elasmotherium did. The world might have lost a bit of magic when we lost these fantastic beasts, but by studying living animals like the European bison, we can get a glimpse at how these formidable historic beings lived and behaved. So, what are some extinct animals you want to hear about? Please let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe for new episodes every week. Thanks for coming along on this journey through time. See you later. I forgot my catchphrase. <laughs> I was so excited about it and I didn't even remember to say it. That's good. Joining me on this journey through time. It looks great on paper, does not sound good coming out of my mouth.